What's going on, everybody? I hope you are having a good day. I am because it's Friday, December 27th, 2019, and it's the freaking weekend. But um, everyone in my house is asleep, and I'm awake looking at knives. I know it's sick, I know. Um, but I would like to present this knife to you. I have not done a uh, butterfly review or a fan knife review or whatever you want to call it. And that's what this is here. I do believe this is a pretty unique knife. I think it's something really cool to present to you guys. I have this on loan from a private collection. And, um, you know, if you guys have knives that you want to send me, something beside Benchmade, um, then do that. Otherwise, I have this large Benchmade collection to go through. And this is a really cool knife I want to show you. So, to start off, when I was a kid, um, you know, a young teenager, I bought this knife. It's a cheap piece of crap. I bought it at a gun show in St. Louis, Missouri, where I grew up, and uh, I thought it was really cool, and I pff, totally wrecked the thing, carried it a ton, you know, did all kinds of stuff with it, you can see, and this was my first experience with a butterfly knife, if you will, um, and that's what I knew it as. You know, this one rattles a lot it's got a lot of loose parts the latch doesn't work um, it's rough right so this is the only one that I've ever bought it's my only experience with one I'm not great at flipping them around uh, I don't find it totally practical although it's kind of fun and they do have competitions but this was my first and last experience with a butterfly knife um, and I got to carry this thing around recently let me tell you what, this thing is awesome. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, you know, is it totally, completely practical? Probably not, but um, we'll get into it. So, um, this type of knife, a lot of people call this a Bali song, and that also is a considered a fan knife or a butterfly knife. Uh, this one in particular is the Benchmade 87. Very, very unique knife. This style knife, the Bally Song, or the Butterfly, or the Fan Blade, or the Gravity Knife, or whatever you want to call it, um, has been traced back to around the early 1900s from around the Philippines. And that's where it really, really took off. And then um, Benchmade, of course started producing them in the United States in about 1979. And the company was actually called Bali Song. That's, that was the name of the company because that's what they made. And they popularized that. And then they made the name of the company uh, Pacific Cutlery Corporation, went bankrupt. And then in 1988, about there, they called it Benchmade. And they had the Model 68, I believe, and uh, really took off. And... That's all she wrote, as far as that goes. So this is it, the 87 Bali Song. It's a blue class, you know, everyday carry kind of thing. CPMS 30V, giving away my information before I get to present it. Uh, they do also give you this in the case, and it's a little sheath, um, and it comes with two Velcro strips. A lot of people are really critical of this. Um, I don't know, I think it's kind of new and innovative for Benchmade to come out with that. I don't think the other knives necessarily come out with this. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, would I use it? No, I would not. I would just carry it in my pocket myself. I actually have seen some really, really cool leather sheaths for butterfly knives, which I think is really cool. Of course, um, that is how the butterfly... Hopefully you guys all know that. That's why it came into play. Okay. Um, as you can see, there's always an expensive butterfly on their knives. This one says Bali Song, and it says 87. Hopefully you guys can see that. So, now a lot of manufacturers make these. Um, you know, know your knife laws depending on what state you live in and everything else. Know if this is legal, know the length of the blade is legal, all that good stuff. Okay, 
let's talk about the dimensions of this knife. This is a massive knife, okay? This is not small at all. Um, overall, the knife is 10 inches long. The blade is four and a half inches. It is CPM S30V, which is good stuff. I always say that. All right, Benjamin USA. I don't know why they put a, uh, a website on there. Uh, that's kind of cheesy. That last line, everything else is cool. It's made in the USA. It's Benchmade as S30V. And then they put like a website right there. Benchmade.com slash something. That's, I don't know, that's, that's a little crazy, I think. You don't need a freaking, everybody knows it's Benchmade. So anyway, um, this is a Warncliffe style blade. So I would not call this a reverse Tonto. It is a Warncliffe. I'm a huge fan of this style blade um, because of the strength in the front of this blade. I really, really like it. I also think it's easier to sharpen because you have one solid edge all the way across. Um, you know, with a Tonto, you, have, you do have a very strong tip with a Tonto, but normally you have an edge here and then an edge here. There's two different angles, um, which can make it tricky with sharpening, you know, depending on what system you're using and things like that. Uh, this Warncliffe, you have one edge, and it's very, very strong at the tip for piercing and stuff like that. I do like it. Okay, I am a fan of that, and I don't think it's very common with a butterfly knife, but it's uh, it really catches your eye. You know, it stands out. I like it. Um, they consider this a flat grind, I guess so. You know, it's a high high grind. It goes to about here, and then you have the rest. Uh, the knife is very very sharp. Um, I guess I could show you. You know, if if that's not enough evidence of how sharp this thing is, I'm one hairy guy. What the hell? Um, anyway, so the handle is 5.5 inches. They are titanium. They're milled and they're solid, um, solid channel construction, which I think is really really cool. And the machining on it is just gorgeous. It really, really is. I mean, it's it's fantastic. It's amazing. I mean, it looks like a work of art, I gotta say. When you hold a lot of knives in your hand and you get to sit there and look at all the detail, I don't think there's any flaws on this knife at all. I really don't think so. Um, you know, a lot of the handles on these skeleton, or a lot of handles on these butterfly knives are skeletonized, right? Um, and that's just to get rid of some of the weight. This knife right here... The 87 is uh, 5.37 ounces. So for the size, I think it's pretty good because you have the skeletonized titanium. I think that helps a lot. Um, this knife does have a magnetic latch. So when you squeeze it, it just opens for you automatically. So you don't have to think about it. I think that's kind of cool. Um, it does have ball bearings in the pivots here. And it is just so, so smooth. It really is. Um, I am actually like in an enclosed little cage here, so I can't move my hands much. But um, you'll just have to trust me. The thing is just super, super smooth. Uh, it just feels awesome. It really does. Uh, I love that. Um, overall, I'm just extremely impressed not only with the feel of the knife, the look of it, the material, I think it's awesome. Um, you know, it has the thrust washers with the bearings, and it's awesome. And, you know, with this kind of craftsmanship, all of the angles, everything, there's so much attention to detail on this knife. There really is. Every little edge is rounded off. It's just perfect. There's no hot spots, but it's still grippy. It's solid construction. There's nothing loose like this knife here. You know, this knife is a piece of crap, right? Cheap metal, cheap construction, no ball bearings, nothing. This knife is amazing. 
Um, what would I compare it to? I'm going to do it, guys. I'm going to do it. I would compare the machining on this Benchmade 87 Bally song with a Chris Reeve knife. I mean, it's just exquisite. I mean, it's really like a work of art. It is awesome. I'm very, very impressed with the tolerances um, and everything that they do. And it really reminds me of some kind of craftsmanship like Chris Reeve. It's actually more expensive than this Chris Reeve knife. Okay, so speaking of, how much is this knife? This knife right now um, is hard to find online, and it's $514. This Chris Reeve knife is uh, $450. This is a large and cozy. It's legendary. It's incredible. I'll place that right here. Um, I'll be talking about it again in just a second. So... Now you have a general idea of the size of the knife, the materials, and everything else. One thing a lot of people don't know, um, I never really looked it up either because I didn't really have a lot of uh, Bali songs or butterfly knives, is just the anatomy in general. Okay, so as you open this, there's two different handles, obviously. This one is a non-sharpened side, okay? So this is called the safe handle. So that's the one I'm usually grabbing, okay? This one right here is the one with the razor edge going into the handle. This is called the bite handle, okay? So ideally, I guess, I'm not a flipper, I'm not a person that does all this, I usually just grab this one, you know, if I'm gonna close it or something like that, and then there's no real risk of cutting yourself. Now, when these guys are flipping them around and throwing them and stuff, it's crazy. It's incredible. Um, I know it's just for fun, but it's pretty cool. Um, obviously, we have the magnetic latch that I talked about, which is awesome. Um, we have the pivot pins right here that just give it that super smooth action. I don't know if you guys can see the ball bearings in there or not but super, super smooth. Okay. Um, with that being said, we have the tang pins. There's one here and one here. What does that do? That keeps the handle from slamming into each other when you go to close it. It also, in this case, creates a little bit of pressure, so this remains locked until you squeeze it enough. Um, and then when you go to close it, the blade just very softly lays in that handle. And then when you close it, you're on the other tang pin. Okay? And then you just squeeze it a little bit here. And it locks in. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, I gotta say, actually, I think this blade is like, you know, pretty much free floating from here on. Obviously, there's contact with the tang and the pin here. But... If you hit this on the ground, you can feel that blade vibrate in there. And I think it's just free floating inside of that handle, which is even more impressive. Like I said, I think the tolerances are very tight and it's extremely impressive. So that's overall the anatomy. One thing this knife really doesn't have that a lot of them do, these are called kickers. And in this case, Whenever you open the handle, it would keep the sharp edge of the blade from hitting the handle, dulling it. So whenever you would open it or close it, the kicker would keep the blade from hitting the handle. Okay. Um, again, this thing is a piece of junk, so it's not a true comparison, but I guess technically it is a butterfly knife. Um, this blade, again, attention to detail, there is a crowned spine on there. I am a huge fan of that. I think it looks awesome. The finish and everything else, and it just looks like a thick piece of metal. It's awesome. Um, and you also have a crowned spine on here, which is pretty cool. So I'm a fan of the crown spine, gotta say. So overall, uh, extremely impressed with this knife. It is razor sharp. The machining and everything is just awesome. 
I cannot find a flaw on this knife. Not that I have a lot of butterfly knives, but uh, this thing is just truly incredible. And, you know, let me know below. Do you think this knife is worth $514 after looking at every single detail um, and the materials and everything else? Do you think this knife is worth $514? I don't think so, but um, I gotta say, it is a very high-end knife, and I think it's one of the nicest Benchmade knives I've ever held, I have to say. With the tolerances and everything else, I'm extremely impressed with the engineering behind it. It's just awesome. It really, really is awesome. Um, and that's why, you know, this is $514. This is a Chris Reeve, one of the most expensive pocket knives on the market. Uh, it's $450. And I would put it in a similar class to that. I really would. They both have titanium handles, um, S30V steel. I think this is S35VN and the Encozy. But it's just awesome, awesome work. So this is the Benchmade 87. I hope you guys are enjoying these reviews. I really appreciate you watching. Please subscribe if you're not already. Uh, share these with your friends and family if they're interested in knives. Uh, or if they would be interested in a knife like this. Have a great weekend and enjoy the rest of your night.